Okay, in this video we're going to find the inverse Laplace transform of a rational function. So we're going to be looking at this one, uh, 1 minus 5s plus 3s squared over s cubed plus 2s squared plus 2s. And um, as a point of reference, I've included a small chart of Laplace transforms here that we'll make use of. Okay, good. So the first thing to uh, notice is that since we have a rational function here, we want to write this in terms of things on the right hand side of this chart then we probably want to use something like partial fractions. And so uh, let's do that. So maybe first we'll notice that the denominator factors as follows. So s cubed plus 2s squared plus 2s. You can obviously take an s out, leaving you with s squared um, plus 2s plus 2. And then the next thing that you can notice is that the discriminant of this is negative, which means it has complex roots, which means we should probably complete the square if we're going to make it look like something like this. And so if we do that, we can write this as s, and then s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, great. And so the next thing that we'll do is we'll rewrite this rational function with this as the denominator. So we have... Um, 1 minus 5s plus 3s squared all over um, s times the quantity s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, great. And now notice that we're going to want to break this apart into two pieces, one of which is a over s. Good. And then the next one will be bs plus C all over this other bit, which is s plus 1 squared plus 1. So I'll rewrite that as, um, actually we'll leave this as s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, great. And then the next thing we want to do is clear the denominators so that we don't have fractions to work with. And so we can do that by multiplying by this denominator, which is on the left-hand side. So we'll multiply by s times the quantity s plus 1 squared plus 1. Okay, great. And so on the left-hand side, that will leave us with 1 minus 5s plus 3s squared. And now on the right-hand side, we have this is a times the quantity s plus 1 squared plus 1 plus uh, b s squared plus c. Okay, and then maybe the next thing that I want to do is multiply this out so we see our s squared terms, our s terms, and our... Uh, constant term, so I noticed that I missed a CS there. Okay, so in that case, we'll get this as A times S squared plus 2S plus 2. That's what you get if you multiply that out. Well, that's how we got it from completing the square up there, plus BS squared plus C. So notice we have, as our S squared coefficient, S A plus B, so we have a plus b s squared, and then our coefficient of s is 2a plus c. So we have plus 2a plus c times s, and then our coefficient of 1, in other words, our constant, is just 2a, so we have plus 2a. Okay, so I'll clean up the board, and then we'll start off uh, from this equation, and we'll solve this equation for A, B, and C so that we can continue on with the partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so along our partial fraction decomposition, we ended at this equation. So we've got 1 minus 5s plus 3s squared equals quantity a plus b s squared plus quantity 2a plus c s plus 2a. So that's going to give us a system of equations for all the coefficients of the constant, which is 1, uh, s, and s squared. So let's go, let's go maybe from the constant first. So I'll denote the constants on either side of the equation by the number 1. And notice uh, on the right-hand side of the equation, I have 2a. On the left-hand side, I have equals 1. So I can write that as 2a equals 1. Now next, I have s on both sides of the equation. So I'll denote the, con the coefficients of s like this. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I have 2a plus c, and on the left-hand side, I have negative 5. 
Okay, fantastic. And now next for the S squared coefficient. So on the right hand side, I have A plus B. And then on the left hand side, I have three. Okay, good. So now notice, uh, this obviously gives us that A is equal to one half. Good. Which tells us that one plus C equals negative five. In other words, C equals negative six. Okay, good. And now we have, again, A is equal to one half. So we have one half plus B equals three. And that makes B equal to three minus one half. So that's six halves minus one halves. And that's five halves. Okay, good. And now notice that tells us that <clears throat> this Laplace transform right here is the same thing as the Laplace, sorry, the inverse Laplace transform of uh, the following. So we have A is one half, so we have one half over S. So if we remember how we did our original partial fraction decomposition, good. And then we have uh, next would be plus 5 halves S uh, minus 6 all over S plus 1 squared plus 1. So that's how we did our partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so now that almost gets us to uh, the point that we want to be at, but notice the Numerator here is not really consistent with the denominator, which is in terms of this s plus 1 squared. So let's rewrite that. So we, here we have the inverse Laplace transform of um, 1 half over s plus 5 halves s plus 1 um, over s plus 1 squared plus 1 and then now we have another s plus 1 squared plus 1 and so now we have to figure out what do we put in the uh, numerator there so notice we borrowed 5 halves from the negative 6 to put it into this term but that involved adding another five halves, so we need to subtract the five halves from this negative six. So let's think about it. Negative six is negative 12 halves minus another five halves is gonna be negative 17 over two. So we have that, but now we can just go ahead and write down the solution. So notice that by our chart over here, this is going to be a one half and then the inverse Laplace transform of one over S by this part of the chart is just one. So that's going to give us one half. Okay, great. And now we have five halves and then we have S plus one and that looks like cosine. So we have this is plus five halves uh, cosine of t, but notice it's been shifted using this formula by e to the minus t. So we have e to the minus t. Good. And now that next term looks like sine. It looks like negative 17 over 2 sine of t. But notice it's also been shifted uh, by negative 1 using this type of formula. So that's going to give us another e to the minus t. Okay, great. And that's the final solution.